So I'm hoping I can find a spot somewhere up here on one of these side streets. But this is where we're at. Kind of just on the side of the street here, next to some apartments. So I think this is gonna be our home for the night. So we've made it back to my, oh, pumpkin fell on the floor. Wonderful home state of Maryland. And it feels good to finally be back. I've been on the road for 10, 11 days, driving across the country. If you guys have been watching my last few videos. And I finally made it back home and I've been kind of bouncing back and forth between my girlfriend's house and my parents' house. But today, we are back in the back of the van, as you guys can tell, obviously. And tomorrow I'm going to hang out with my girlfriend and she actually lives in Baltimore City, but she is out of town tonight. And I don't really feel like making that drive tomorrow. So tonight we're gonna be stealth camping somewhere in Baltimore City, which should be fun because I love Baltimore City. It gets a bad rap online as one of the dirtiest and most crime ridden cities in the country, but I love it. And like any city, there's good and bad parts. So I kind of have a few ideas for where I want to stay tonight in the city itself. But right now we're currently hanging out in this random giant parking lot for the last hour, sitting on my phone in the back of the van watching TikToks. But before we actually head into the city itself, I got to stop in here and grab a few things for dinner tonight. Because since we're back in Maryland, I figured I'd make something tonight with Maryland crab in it, but I didn't want to cook just Maryland crab because it's kind of boring. You just kind of throw it in a pot with some seasoning and you're good to go. So we're going to make some Maryland crab pizza. Do you guys have any uh, Maryland crab? No. None? We haven't. Oh, really? There we go. Got everything we need. So apparently they don't have crabs here at the store anymore, which kind of surprises me because almost every grocery store in Maryland has crabs. But the guy at the counter said it has something to do with some sort of bass or some sort of fish infestation where they have been eating a lot of the crabs, so they're not as readily available, so they didn't have any. I'm not too sure, but either way, we're in Maryland, we're heading to Baltimore. There's gonna be somewhere where we can find some crabs. So over the weekend when I was at my parents' house and I had somewhere to park the van where I could get some stuff done, I decided to take that time to clean out my fridge because the freezer section in my fridge has a tendency to freeze over and frost over and smell like death. So I parked in the cul-de-sac and I cleaned out my fridge, at least most of the stuff, and my condiments. And I defrosted my entire freezer, but I really underestimated how much water was really frosted up because it was about maybe half an inch thick all around on this freezer. And it filled up this whole thing and flooded the entirety of my van's floor, which was not fun because a lot of this floor Especially if you look under these cabinets, it's not perfectly sealed, so I know water got under a bunch of things. So I am kind of worried about mold, but at least I have a freezer. But man, I don't know if I'm going to be able to keep doing these cooking series on the channel if groceries get any more expensive. That was one grocery bag, and it was $45. And I still haven't even gotten the crab yet. Groceries are getting ridiculously expensive. But anyways, got the groceries put away. Let's head into the city and see if we can find some more stealth camp tonight. Actually, before we go, i got to get my uh, shotgun rider ready. go. Mike looks excited to stealth camp tonight in Baltimore. Stealth camping in cities is always, in my opinion, more dangerous and more worrisome and riskier than stealth camping out in the wilderness because for me at least, worrying about animals and bears or whatever else is out in the wilderness getting into the van is a lot less stressful than worrying about people getting into the van because people are a lot more capable and I don't know why Mike just died. Well, Rest in peace, Mike. But I do have an advantage stealth camping in Baltimore because I know the city. I grew up here, I went to school here, I went to Towson. So I kind of have a good idea for which areas to go to and which areas to avoid and where I can look for potential stealth camping spots tonight in the city. And the first place we're going to is right in the Inner Harbor in this parking lot, but I'm not sure about the parking regulations or rules there. So we'll just have to see when we get there and reevaluate if we gotta move. My first idea with stealth camping here in the city is right here in uh, in the Inner Harbor. There's a paid parking lot. I don't know if you can see it right there. It's just a random paid parking lot that I found on my maps that I'm hoping we'll be able to stay overnight at. This is a pretty good location right here in the middle of uh, the Inner Harbor, but I guess we'll see. This is what we're looking at right here. So I'm gonna have to read the rules, see how much it costs to park here and if we even can, but as of right now, We've got our spot. First thing I do every time I pull into a uh, city camping spot since I have such bright lights back here is seal up all the gaps in my curtain so nobody can see any of the light leaking through. So I haven't decided whether this is gonna be the 
final resting point of our campsite in the city tonight, but at least it's a good spot to get out and kind of walk around, check out some stuff in the city. I think you can stay here in this parking lot that I'm in overnight, but from reading the signs, it is expensive, $4 an hour. So I think I can do better than that. So I might try to find some neighborhood in the area, probably on the east side where it's a little bit safer and nicer, um, and just find a free parking spot somewhere over there and just camp up for the night so I'm not spending so much money just to sleep here. But we are right on the harbor, so figured I might as well go check it out. Look at this smart car though. That thing is sick. <laughs> it's got a Mercedes logo and beefy tires on it. A lot of people in uh, Orioles jerseys out today. I think they just won the uh, Eastern Conference for the first time in a long time, which is pretty cool, but I've only been out for like 20 seconds and so I've seen like four people wearing Orioles jerseys or Orioles clothes. You know you're back in Maryland when you start seeing the Maryland flag everywhere and Old Bay. Because if there's one thing that Marylanders do more than any state, it's put the Maryland flag on clothing and eat Old Bay. It's kind of our thing. So I think so many of these cities like Baltimore and Philadelphia and a lot of other kind of historic cities on the East Coast you really get a bad rap online of being crappy places where nobody wants to live or that they're dangerous. But I feel like if you take the time and get out and explore these cities, there's a lot more to offer than what you would just see online. Kind of like this right here, the USS Constellation, which is the last US sailing only warship that was designed by the US Navy. So that's pretty cool. There is one thing about Baltimore that you will see online that is definitely a true thing. And that is how gross the waters here are in the Inner Harbor. And you'll see videos online of people coming out here and jumping in this water and swimming in it. But personally, I think you'd get so many diseases if you did, but looks kind of nice. Hey, you do the YouTube stuff without camping? Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I watch your stuff all the time. Really nice oh, to meet you. I went by, I was like, hey, <laughs> <laughs> No way, yeah, I'm filming yeah. a video uh, camping in the city tonight. Oh, cool, all right. Nice oh, to meet you, what was your nice name? Nice to meet you, Officer Hiddle. Officer Hiddle, nice yeah. to meet you, Ryan. Nice to meet you. Yeah, basically what I was saying is this water is pretty gross. Uh, definitely wouldn't want to swim in it. But it has gotten better in recent years with uh, this new thing that they have, the trash wheel, which I think we'll see. I think it's down there somewhere. I'm not too sure, but it's like this big trash wheel with these big googly eyes that kind of filters out some stuff. And there's been some other initiatives in the city to keep the water cleaner, but definitely a long way from swimble. I've walked by this so many times in my life, these little dragon boats. I've always wanted to take one, but I never have. Maybe tomorrow, once my girlfriend gets back, I'll take her out on one. They look like so much fun paddling out on the harbor. This is pretty cool too. It's like a man-made floating island experimental wetland put on by the national aquarium so this is another thing they're trying to do to clean the waters building these kind of wetland urban environments so that's pretty cool but i am starving i've been eating all day so i gotta find somewhere to eat also a little fun fact about me i went to school at towson maryland which isn't too far from here and i was actually a valet and the restaurant i worked at was right there the capitol grill or cap grill here in uh, baltimore and the garage where you parked the cars was actually back that alley and you had to pull the cars around Parked them in the garage and then when you pulled them out you had to pull them out down a one way and then reverse all the way back to that corner right there to let people get their cars it was the worst valeting experience i've ever had in my life backing those cars up down that one way road was absolutely miserable you going are you selling candy thank you okay when well, you can keep the change thank you i'm gonna sell some skittles Ooh. lobster roll sounds so good I'm not gonna lie, pretty expensive. Almost $40 for this. It's crazy. That was delicious. All right, now that we've got a little pre-dinner snack in, let's head back to the van and find where we're actually going to stealth camp tonight before it gets too late, people get off work, and there's no spots left. So I don't have an exact plan for where we're going tonight. But I do have a general idea because I know that the Canton waterfront area, one, is generally nicer than a lot of places in the city. And also they have free street parking, which is the most important thing. So I'm not gonna put anywhere specific on the GPS. I'm just gonna kind of drop a pin and just kind of drive to where that pin is. And hopefully we can find some free street parking. $33 for an hour and 22 minutes? That is a joke. That's ridiculous. I thought this parking lot was gonna be expensive, but I never thought that it was gonna be $33 for an hour and a half. Wow, I just got ripped off. Well, 
Good thing we decided not to stay there for the entire night, but we're only about 15 minutes away from where we're heading to. And I took my key into the side of All right. This is where our GPS is taking us. So I'm hoping I can find a spot somewhere up here on one of these side streets. Next to this factory, it looks pretty good, actually. I'll pull in here. Take one of these spots. I don't know. I kind of like this spot, but I am sticking out a little bit. But this is where we're at. Kind of just on the side of the street here, next to some apartments. And then this, I think these might be apartments. They don't look like apartments. I think it's some sort of factory or something. No signs saying no overnight parking. So I think this is gonna be our home for the night. And before I get too settled in, I'm gonna get on my phone and make sure there's a place around here where I can pick up some crabs. I think I got two options. There's a Baltimore seafood, five minute walk away. And then there's also another seafood palace, a four minute walk away. So I think I'll probably head over to one of those. Now we know we can get crab for cooking dinner tonight. Fun fact, in 1850, Baltimore was the second largest city in all of America, which I guess kind of makes sense. Because it was on the East Coast, it was a port city, and they also had the uh, Baltimore and Ohio Railroad, which helped boost the economy around here, along with steel production and shipyards, which pretty much all have ceased in the last 20 or 30 years. So that has kind of pushed the city further and further into the state of decline that you see online and all that stuff. But recently, at least in areas like this, it has actually been on the up and up. Alrighty, whoa. Well, I think the spot that I'm going is right there. Captain James Seafood. How's it going? Is it possible to get crabs to go? Uh, I don't know that we're doing any today. Uh, I'm afraid we can't do that. None to go? Yeah, we don't have, uh, we don't have enough for like service. Okay. Yeah. Alright. Uh, maybe Chris's? What if I, uh, what, what's the minimum order for inside? Half like dozen. Half dozen? So if I get a, if I get a half yeah. dozen, could I just take those to go? So we're unfortunate we couldn't do it. Today. Okay. There, okay. You know? I'll go try it out. I wish I could sell them to you, but my goodness, we're, yeah, I'm, I'm Yeah, sorry. no problem. Yeah. I want to know how it makes sense that they have crabs and they're selling crabs, but only if you're eating them there. Like, what's the difference if I order a half dozen to go versus eating them at the restaurant? I don't really know. But sadly, they wouldn't sell me any crabs to go. So we're taking the scenic route over to Chris's, which is another restaurant that they recommended where I might be able to find some crabs, so walked along the water over there. I want to change your life. You guys have Maryland crabs? No, they're out of Louisiana. They're out of Louisiana? Can I just get that, the, the bucket of the jumbo lump crab meat? You want some sandwich? Sure. Yes, please. Do. Thanks, have a good one. You do the same, thank you. Wow. We are not having much luck today with the prices of things. I guess there really is a shortage of Maryland crabs because I've gone to three stores today, two of them didn't have it, and one said they wouldn't sell them to me. And the only crabs that they had, whole crabs, in that store were from Louisiana. But they do have these, this jumbo lump crab meat that says it's from the Chesapeake Bay. So we didn't get whole Maryland crabs, but we did get Maryland crab meat, at least. Alrighty, took a little bit longer than anticipated, but we finally have everything we need, including our $40 crab, to make some crab pizza. So typically when I make pizzas in the van, I do like to make my pizza dough from scratch, but today I just wasn't feeling it, and I was also anticipating cooking full crab, so I cheated a little bit and got a pre-made, like, Pillsbury, Pillsbury dough pizza crust. We're gonna be making a mini pizza in the cast iron. There's our crust. So I think I might try to make two smaller pizzas since this pizza crust is gonna be pretty big and this pan is pretty small, it's like individual pizza size. I'm gonna do one in the cast iron and one on here and just kind of see which one comes out better. Where is my pizza cutter? There it is. Beautiful. 
I got this new camera the other day, the Insta360 Go, and I'm trying it out. Give you guys a more uh, immersive POV feel of what it's like to be in the van. Now that we've got those, now just gotta get some butter melted. Because we're gonna turn these pizza crusts into garlic bread pizza crust, because that's the best way to do it. And again, having a microwave would make melting butter so much easier. All right, so now that we've got our butter melted, we can take some Old Bay. This wouldn't be a Maryland video without Old Bay. Mix some of that into our butter, along with some garlic. There we go. Beautiful. Nice little buttery rub to put on our pizza. So now we can take this and coat our pizza crust with it. Oh, this smell is making me crave crabs. So good. There we go. Two beautifully coated pizzas. Now that we've got these coated and our oven is preheating, we can go ahead and throw these in. And let them bake for about, I don't know, maybe four to five minutes. And while we wait for that, we're gonna start working on the sauce. And for that, we need one and a half cups of heavy cream. We'll bring that to a nice boil. Now that we've got that boiling, we can turn our heat down to Right around medium. And basically what we're making here is kind of like a uh, variation of an Alfredo sauce. So I'm gonna add in some Old Bay bouillon powder, chicken bouillon, chicken bouillon, bouillon. Sprinkle that in there. Don't wanna go too heavy on the seasonings. You can always add, you can't really take away. According to the recipe that I'm following, you're supposed to add Italian seasoning. There's my timer for the uh, pizzas. And these aren't fully cooked because they're still going back in. Want to get them a little pre-baked. What I was saying is I don't have Italian seasoning, so I'm just putting in some basil and oregano, and I don't really have much of either. So, let's add in what we got. I need to re-up on some seasonings. And then also, I'm gonna add in just a sprinkle of garlic powder. Let me cook this mixture on low for a little while. Let it thicken up a little bit. And also, there is one thing I did forget to add to this sauce. Actually, it's two things. First thing is the juice from one lemon. Go ahead and get that real quick. Add that in there. And then to top it all off, just a little sprinkle of Parmesan cheese. Also, this recipe that I'm following online is so funny. This lady that's made this recipe, I'm gonna link her channel in the description, but her voiceover is hilarious. Just wanna melt the cheese just a little Okay, and the Parmesan just give it a little bit of tang with that lemon juice. Make your mouth pop and your neck snap. <laughs> okay, so now you see that it's done. Yeah, definitely go give her a follow. This is the best YouTube recipe I've ever followed. But Danny Rose on YouTube. Link will be in the description. But now that we've got everything in there, actually, the lemon juice and the Parmesan, we'll let that simmer down and thicken up a little bit until we can spread it on those pizza crusts. Also, one more thing, and this is kind of an audible from the recipe that I got online that I'm going to be adding to this pizza that wasn't from the recipe of some bacon because I thought it would be good on there. So I'm gonna get a few pieces of that cooking up in the back. That sauce to thicken. And I mean, you can't really go wrong with bacon. It goes good on pretty much anything. Alrighty, pretty much perfect timing. <coughs> Bacon's finished, nice and crispy. I also chopped up some uh, green scallions off camera, but bacon's crispy, sauce is creamy. Should be good to assemble our pizzas once we give these uh, bacon bits a nice chop. There we go. Get to assembling some pizzas. What? First things first, spoon on some of this sauce. Oh my god, that looks so good. And then we can throw down some of our green onions, just a little bit on both of the pizzas. And then I'm really gonna kind of overdo it here with the crab meat. Just absolutely obliterate these things with crab meat. I guess there is a lot of crab meat in that little tub. Maybe it was worth forty dollars. Now we can do our cheese. I'm doing uh, two types of cheese here. We got four cheese Italian. Sprinkle some of that on there. And I'm also gonna do just some straight up mozzarella. Big chunks of it. I'm gonna give both of them a little dusting of Old Bay. And then finish them off with some scallions. Just a little bit more. And then a bunch of bacon bits. And a light dusting of cheese on top of both. Now we can take both of these and pop them back in the oven for about another maybe seven minutes. But we'll see, this oven is very inconsistent with how it cooks things. But in the meantime, I'm gonna get this whole place cleaned up. All right, so my timer just went off. 
Ooh, those are good. I think that front one might have cooked a little faster than the back one. Go ahead and take that out. Wow. That looks beautiful. I think I might give this one a little bit more time. Yeah, I'm gonna give that one like two more minutes. This one looks like it's just about done. So the last thing I wanna do with this pizza is uh, top it with some fresh parsley. So we'll wait for that second one to finish cooking. Just gonna rough chop some of this up. There we go. Throw that on there. I'm gonna hit it with one last drizzle of this sauce that I saved. Cause I'm definitely gonna be using this on something else. And now, we can eat. And the reason that I kind of pulled this out a little bit earlier than the other one is because the bottom of my oven for some reason cooks way, way faster. It's way hotter on the bottom side as opposed to the top, the way it's pizza is supposed to cook. So whenever I cook pizzas in there, they always burn, especially when they're on these thin pans. So it's better to have it a little bit less crispy and not burnt than burnt and have it ruin the flavor. But that looks so good. Oh, that is stunning. This one looks way better. But I'll probably save that one, honestly, for my girlfriend tomorrow. Let her try it. So I'm honestly pretty bummed I wasn't able to find a whole Maryland crab to use to cook this. But honestly, it would have just taken a lot more time and been a lot bigger of a mess with picking apart and trying to get that crab. At the end of the day, maybe it was a good thing. There's always a silver lining to everything. But yeah, see, that's perfectly cooked on the bottom. Very sturdy pizza, too. Without further ado, cheers. Oh my god. That is so good. This meal is definitely getting a high score. Every flavor on this pizza works so well together. I think overall on the Ryan Toomey food rating scale, I would give this pizza a solid, very solid 8.3. This is good. I think that might be the highest score I've given so far. This thing is so good. And shout out to Danny Rose for this recipe. You're an absolute legend. Also, it's definitely not too late. It's only 8. 16. So I think I'm just gonna finish this pizza and since we're so close to all those neighborhood pubs I think I'm gonna go grab a pint at one of those places and come back to the van and hit the hay So I will catch you guys in the morning through the night and I have a missed FaceTime call from my girlfriend from 14 minutes ago. I think it's time to get up and get over there. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Did you make it back home? I did. Okay. Well I'm heading over there. I'll be there in uh, 15 minutes. See you then. Love you. It is time to head out from our camping spot here on the streets in Baltimore. It's time to go see my lady. Okay, let's open it. Let's open it. Let's open it normally. No. <laughs> okay. I smell bad. I need to take a shower. <laughs> <laughs>